It's great to see you again. Thank you for having me. I feel like I'm asking you the same questions over and over, because that's all that seems to matter right now. How do you answer it now that the stocks keep going up and valuations are getting longer? It's like Groundhog Day. We keep talking about the same things. But these seven stocks have had, I mean, not just the last six months. Over the last year and a half, they've added $8.8 .8 trillion in market cap. To give you some perspective, the second largest market in the world, China, has a market cap of $12.1 trillion. These seven stocks alone have gained more in market cap than the whole German market, the French market, the Swiss market. It's been an astonishing run, but I would also argue that before we dismiss these as risky tech companies, these are the money machines in this market. So, and Jeremy Siegel talked about value stocks. I think in many ways these have become the value stocks for investors who care about earnings and cash flows because these are the companies that are delivering those earnings and cash flows. If you ask NVIDIA stock investors about the biggest risks to the company, many started talking about the US-China trade war and how it forbids NVIDIA from selling its chips to companies operating in China. This is extremely important for NVIDIA as the Chinese market used to account for as much as a quarter of NVIDIA's total data center revenue, and the company made 10 billion duodu from China in the last fiscal year. So it's no surprise that NVIDIA doesn't want to lose the Chinese market and has tried to come up with less powerful chips that would get around the trade restrictions. And according to a new report, NVIDIA is set to make an in 1 billion from China this year, despite the sanctions. And this is what we're going to talk about in today's video, as well as how this might affect NVIDIA stock. But first, if you want to keep up with NVIDIA's latest updates and keep up with the stock market's latest news, you can follow our Twitter account. We post multiple times daily about the biggest changes and catalysts in the market. So click the follow button. If you don't want to miss the newest market updates, now back to today's video. Wow, so, so, you, so you don't necessarily think that we're in any kind of danger zone in terms of valuation here now. If we're in the danger zone, it's not just seven stocks are in the danger zone of tech stocks. It's a market overall. I mean, I compute a monthly market equity risk premium is my personal indicator of how hot or cold the market is. Start of July, that equity risk premium. The implied equity risk premium for the market is 4.11%. That's the lowest number it's been since September of 2008. In other words, it's almost as if the market has raised the last 15 years and we're looking at numbers very much like they, what they used to be before the big crisis, the 2008 crisis. And the question we can ask is, is the market overreaching on that assumption? But a 4% T-bond rate and a 4.11% equity risk premium is 2005. 2006 numbers, not 2018 or 2019 numbers. Does that, does that tell you that we might be heading into a certain place? We need to be aware of, yeah, I think we need to be careful. I think 4% to me is a red, red flag, at least from the numbers I've looked at historically, once EO's premiums drop below 4%. It's almost like a magnet pulling them back towards a 4%. So I'm going to track that number. And I track it at the start of every month. And at the moment, I think we're getting to a point where even pre-2008 status. You'd say this market is reaching, you know, a zone where you, you might need a correction to clean it up again. A new story from Financial Times says over the next few months, NVIDIA will send more than a million of its new H20 chips to China. These chips are made to work around U.S. rules that say we can't sell AI computers to Chinese companies. Researchers at the research firm Semi-Analysis said that this number is almost twice as many as Huawei plans to sell of its rival product, the Ascend 910B, which is made in China. As you may already know, the U.S. doesn't let American chip companies sell their most powerful chips to China out of fear that Beijing will use them to make more powerful AI systems for military purposes. As a result, NVIDIA's sales in the country dropped significantly. In fact, on the company's most recent earnings call, CEO Colette Kress said that NVIDIA's China sales have dropped to a mid-single-digit percentage. This is a huge drop when you consider that China used to account for 25% of NVIDIA's data center sales. 
the fact that the company will still make a lot of money from the country is very good news for NVIDIA stock, so don't miss it. NVIDIA did get hit with a downgrade this morning from New Street research analysts at the firm saying they see limited, further upside and are downgrading the stock from buy to neutral. Well, Brett, everybody is trying to be a hero on NVIDIA. All I know is, I go back to a recent JP Morgan story, and it is very, a uh, report is very simple. Demand continues to outstrip supply for NVIDIA chips, and as long as that continues to happen, there might be some volatility in the name. How do you dump this stock? I me, they're a beast. They're on an A path to potentially $10 trillion market cap. You know, it's not a stock. Particularly, that's just one that you talk about, where it's just, okay, yeah, just trade this name. No, it's, it is an investment decision that has now been regarded as such for a long-term kind of hold. Type of mindset. It's not something that you're trying to day trade at this juncture, even though it got a little bit more affordable after this, the uh, stock split that took place in a couple weeks back. Last thing you want to hear. So you call up your money manager uh, and they tell you, hey, I hope you had a great July 4th. Yeah, I'm going to be lightening the load on NVIDIA. Who the hell wants to hear that? I mean, is the great way to lose your job and lose client money. I mean, that is, it's tough to sell a stock that everybody is rightfully very bearish on. For strong fundamental reasons, I mean, the AI chip rollout, this is not late 90s. Doc stuff with Company is not making any money. This is real stuff, real technology, and this company continues to be uh, the leader by, by years. I mean, by years, they're leading other companies. According to the semi-analysis analyst, each H20 chip costs between $122,000 and $113,000, suggesting that NVIDIA is likely to generate upwards of $12 billion in sales. This would be more than the $10 billion the company made from its entire China business in the last fiscal year, which includes selling graphics chips to PC gamers and other products. It's important to note that analysts at both Morgan Stanley and Semi-Analysis say that the H20 chip is now being shipped in volume and is proving popular with Chinese customers despite its downgraded performance, compared with the chips NVIDIA can sell in the U.S. additionally. An in-depth look Dylan Patel said that while on paper, the H20S capabilities are below that of Huawei's 910B in practice, NVIDIA's chip is actually better thanks to superior memory performance. He also estimated that Huawei would sell about 550,000 chips over the same period as the company, and its manufacturing partners are still struggling to prod, produce the complex chips in high enough volumes to meet demand keep in mind that most Chinese AI companies have built their AI models on top of NVIDIA's ecosystem. And software meaning that switching to Huawei's infrastructure would be time-consuming and costly, so we can say that NVIDIA is set to make a massive recovery in the Chinese market, which would definitely reflect positively on NVIDIA stock combined with the upcoming release of its most powerful platform ever,